We're filming a video about um, time crystals. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this was like a big discovery in 2021. 2012, we came up with a theory for this new phase of matter. Fast forward to 2021, physicists used one of Google's quantum computers to make a time crystal. What does that sentence mean? <laughs> I was looking back through some of the big discoveries in physics that happened last year. I don't know how I missed this one. It's crazy. Have you ever heard of time crystals? It sounds like something in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It does. Time crystals are talked about in the Doctor Who series, so you're really not far off. Oh. Do you know what a crystal is? I Here's don't know what defines a crystal. Give me a crystal. Rubies. Ruby. Okay, so I'm looking up the atomic structure of rubies. Yeah. It's repeating. It looks like tiles. The pattern is repeating, but in three dimensions. This is what diamond looks like. You're looking down at atoms. Carbon, carbon, carbon repeating this way. This is what the pattern of table salt looks like. Chlorine, sodium, chlorine, sodium. But the physics definition of something crystalline, it has to do with whether the structure is repeating, whether it has a pattern. So you're repeating this way, you're repeating that way, and repeating this way. So it's repeating in all dimensions. How many dimensions are there? Yeah, three spatial dimensions, but there's a fourth dimension. The time? Time, but imagine you're also repeating in your time dimension. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I know, right? No one else did either <laughs> until 2012. This was like a random thought experiment of this guy named Frank Wilczek. Frank Wilczek is a professor at MIT. I met him a couple times while I was there, a year after I graduated. So that's how recent this theory was. Like not the discovery, but the theory was in 2012. It was the year after I graduated. And he was preparing for a class on symmetries in physics. And he was like, so what if there were symmetries, not in just spatial dimensions, but in time as well? And what he thought that might look like is that you could conceive of a material that has some kind of state and it repeats back and forth. So just like with the crystalline structure, you know how it's chlorine and sodium and chlorine, so you're repeating back and forth. But instead, you have a material that's in one state and then a different state, and then back to the first state. So like you can imagine an object like that, right? Like a metronome. Think of state as like the left orientation in your metronome or the right orientation. Can you think of anything else? Uh, like a seesaw? Yeah, like a seesaw. Water evaporating, waterfall. Yeah, like water the water evaporating. cycle. The thing about most of those, something powers that. With the metronome, typically there's like a spring. So there's some energy going in and it's using that energy. So what, what Frank Wilczek was really imagining like a microscopic scale material that has two different states, left to right to left to right. I don't know, up to down to up to down or something. Is there any material example that is in two states like that? It's not something as big as water or as complex as a clock. Something really small on the atomic scale. Yeah, there are some things, I mean, what they ended up using were atoms that have have spin. I didn't want to get into this yet, but I, now I want to. Do you know what spin even is? Like I started talking about this. No. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> one of those inherent properties that's so fundamental to a particle and we can see what it does. It's like, even with mass, it's hard to explain what mass really fundamentally is. We can explain what it does. It pulls other masses toward it. It affects the curvature of space-time. What is mass? And the same is true of spin. For a lot of particles have properties called spin. Spin is a really special property because it can change and it can flip from up to down. It can actually point in a lot of different directions, but typically when you measure it, you measure it on the up and down axis and it will just choose one or the other when you do that. That's a quantum thing. We're not gonna get into it, but for simplicity, let's imagine that our particle can only be spin, spin up and spin down. Spin, it looks like this magnetic moment. It looks like this little magnetic field coming from an electric charge going around in a circle. You'd think, like maybe it actually is, you know, the charged particle spinning. But neutrons, what's the charge of a neutron? Neutron. It's, yeah, it's zero. Don't have any charge and they have spin. So it's, so not, it's, it's not necessarily, simple. it's not as simple as a charge spinning or a charge going around in a circle. It's gotcha. this intrinsic property that's really hard to describe. Makes sense. Okay, cool. So spin, that on is something on an atomic scale that can flip back and forth. So that answers your question in a very roundabout way, but I'm glad that we did that because- I'm glad too, because I would hate to go further without knowing- Without knowing what spin is. Yeah. Is. Okay, so, so it's 2012. Frank Wilczek's idea was imagine that there's this material where you have a state like spin up or spin down and it flips back and forth. 
Before you see my brain explode trying to finally explain what time crystals are, a quick message. Thanks to Helix for sponsoring this video. You know what determines the quality of my videos more than anything? Whether I got a good night's sleep. Having a regular sleep schedule is so important to me that I will stop a movie halfway through. Which doesn't make me a monster, Kyle. The science on sleep is clear. We need quality sleep to function better. And having a good mattress can make a big difference in the quality of your sleep. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that's conveniently shipped right to your door. They help you find the right mattress for you using a sleep quiz that accounts for your body type and sleeping preferences. And they have something for everyone. And if you sleep with a partner, you can even take the quiz together to find something that's the perfect compromise. Based on my results, Helix matched me with the Helix Dusk Lux. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> this is fun. I've had my Helix mattress for about a month now. And when you crawl into bed, the Dusk Lux feels like that fancy vacation experience. You know, that cozy feeling that I'm talking about. Nap time. With your Helix sleep mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial and a 10 year warranty. Plus there are financing options and flexible payment plans and it comes rolled up in a box and it delivers straight to your door for free within the US. And if you're nervous to buy something that you haven't tried, well you have more than three months to make sure that you love it. If you don't, they'll pick it up for you and you'll get a full refund. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix. Go to helixsleep.com slash physicsgirl for up to $200 off your mattress. And now don't be a monster like me and stop this video halfway through. I promise I'm about to tell you about the real time crystals that we actually found. Crystals are the repeating in space. Time crystals would be something, a material that repeats states back and forth in time. That's why he called it a time crystal. Imagine you don't give it any energy. Like a metronome is using the energy you put into it. Two years later, so in 2014, a paper came out where physicists argued that this is actually impossible because of the second law of thermodynamics. Have you ever heard of that over time? Like the entropy of the universe tends to increase. Yeah, yeah. Things don't order themselves. The universe tends to go toward chaos. Overall, entropy increases. The gist of that law is that you can't have perpetual motion machines. You can't have a wheel that just spins forever and ever. You can't have... I bet you could. <laughs> you and all of those TikTokers <laughs> that are trying to make perpetual motion machines. Did you not watch my video on perpetual motion? <laughs> Essentially what Frank Wilczek thought of was a perpetual motion machine. And so even on a microscopic scale, it's not possible to have something like this. But then fast forward to 2020, 2020, 2021, physicists used one of Google's quantum computers to make a time crystal. What does that sentence mean? <laughs> Have you heard of a quantum computer? No. Really? Yeah. Oh, whoa, okay. Guessing it either works with quantum stuff or it's really, really tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the former. I've never actually had to explain a quantum computer, so I wasn't ready for this. But the gist of a quantum computer is that with a regular computer, the basic unit, like the basic thing storing your information are, are bits, ones and zeros. Yeah. And they store it as like electrical setting. Even this one, even your phone, like all the processing is done with bits. That's why you have to have terabytes because you have to have trillions and trillions of bits. So that's a typical computer. With a quantum computer, the biggest difference is that the bits are called qubits. Each bit is actually a little quantum system. So that it could just be an electron or something that is so small, it has quantum properties, which means you have to deal with superposition of states and interacting wave functions and tunneling, like quantum tunneling through barriers. You have to deal with that in a quantum computer. But the idea is that if you've got interaction between all your different qubits with each other, you can have many, many different kinds of states with fewer bits. That's that's enough. <laughs> They're not user friendly. Like there's no personal quantum computers yet. But in 2021, we used a quant we <laughs> Google and a bunch of researchers used a quantum computer 
to make a time crystal. And the quantum computer or the bits in it became the time crystal. We're talking about like something happening on a really small microscopic scale. And where can you get one of those that you can easily control? Inside of a quantum computer. That's what the computer's made to do. So you could have these electrons that are pointing spin up and spin down and you can control whether they're spin up and spin down or whether they're interacting with each other. The qubits in Google's Sycamore quantum computer are more complicated than just simple individual electron spins, but I simplified and called them spins, so forgive me. All of this feels a little bit hard to grasp, like why this is important. All that they really did is they used 20 quantum bits inside of this computer and they set them randomly to states of up and down. So they took all these qubits and put them in a line so that they were close enough, they were closely interacting with each other, which was important. And then they made them either spin up or spin down. Spin up, down, down, up, 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 down, up. So a random configuration. And then they got them to flip. I am not gonna be able to do this. Oh my gosh, this is so hard. Yeah, but all at once. <laughs> they got them to flip to down, up, up, down, 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 up, down, and then back to the original state and back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> now the real test. And then it'll flip back to its original state, almost like it remembered something from the original state, which is what's so crazy about these things. It's like there's this inherent memory in the system of where it was and where it's going. But I said that 2014, we said that physicists wrote a paper saying this was impossible. But what's missing was that they actually sent in laser light and they like just kind of kept this laser going at it. It flipped back and forth. So it wasn't perpetual motion. So it wasn't perpetual motion because you had an input of energy. The difference between this time crystal and something like a metronome is that the time crystal didn't absorb any of the energy. So like the laser light is obviously interacting with the time crystal in some way, but it's not using any of the energy. Crazy. That's the cool part. Yeah. Does it flip right after the laser leaves, soon after? You would think that the time crystal, this, this system would flip states with the frequency, with every oscillation of the light, but that's not what happens. It flips every integer mul multiple of the frequencies. I actually got this part a little bit wrong. So I said the qubits are flipping with integer multiples of the frequency of the light, but it's in fact integer multiples of the length of the pulses of the light and has nothing to do with the frequency of the light. So thank you to Jared and Robert who reviewed this video and caught that error for me. You know, every two or every four, which would be weird because it'd be like, you push a kid on a swing, right? And they go, forward and back with every push that you do. Imagine like you push the kid and then it stays over there for three more pushes and you have to like go push the kid and it doesn't come back and then it's and then on the fourth time it swings and then it goes up there and stays again. Pushing the kid on the swing and it only comes back every four times. Those are the weird things about this time crystal. It doesn't use up any energy and it doesn't heat up the system. The system stays exactly the same temperature, which is very weird. And then the other uh, weird thing is that it doesn't oscillate with the light. It oscillates with an integer multiple of the light. It did break a symmetry of the universe. Have you ever heard of that? I assume not. Nope. <laughs> it's a complicated way of saying that the laws of physics will act the same today as they do tomorrow. If you put a ball on a hill today, it will roll down. And if you put the ball on the hill tomorrow, it won't roll up. It will still roll down. Translate your system through time it should do exactly the same thing. But if you look at the time crystal, in one moment, it's flipping like this. And in the next moment, it's not doing that. It's flipping back. Often in physics, you come up with a theory and then it's like 50 to 100 years before you get the thing. But in this case, the idea was conceived in 2012. The theory is only a 10 year old and yet we have the, the discovery already. That's amazing. That never happens in physics. And in fact, in 2015, there were a couple that we thought were time crystals. Like we were close and physicists were like, we found time crystals. And then we we're like, oh, they didn't quite satisfy the criteria. They have to be a little more stable. And then fast forward nine years, you have a quantum computer doing that. 
That's crazy. And now there have been other time crystals. There's a time crystal made in light. Now I'm gonna like, I've given you an idea of what a time crystal is. Now I'm just gonna blow that wide open and be like, you don't even need matter. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like endless opportunities and really cool stuff. That's awesome. Is that what it sounds like to physicists as well? Is it sound I, more? Maybe Richard Feynman, are you familiar with his name? Yes. He wrote an entire paper that was about imagining a day when quantum computers are used to simulate physics. You have to use quantum systems systems to simulate the physics and learn something about it, but you are actually doing the physics. And he yeah. imagined a day when quantum computers would be used That's to do something cool. like that. And here we are. So you wouldn't hit the limits of an application. You would hit the limits of physics. Exactly. Physics. That's yeah, what, that's think, yeah. time crystals. Well, I, you could have sat me down and just told me about the 2012 theory and we could have hung out and talked about that for a little, it would have been fun. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So, yeah. Can I get back to my computer now? Um, your normal classical computer. <laughs> yes. Happy physicsing, Levi. Thank you. That's the first <laughs> time you directed it to me. Always <laughs> oh, it. Happy physicsing. I like how you said thank you. Oh, love it.